One of our European Sentinels has fallen in the first series of the day against our Koreans, who look to power through the gates here in Group E. And our second series will be no different. Yeah, this is uh, going to be a difficult one once again, but it is a real tale of two different players here. With these, we have on screen Baby Knight and First. All right, well, let's talk about this matchup first of all, before we talk about Baby Knight more specifically in First. This matchup, give it to me six months ago, I say Baby Knight's a massive contender here to win this. Mm -hmm. In recent times, not as much, um, but... One thing I think here, Kolaris, this is going to be very difficult for Baby Knight. I, I can't see a win here, but Baby Knight has skill and potential inside him. Yeah, that's for certain. As we have a very, very scary two players here in terms of first, of course, who is very strong. Baby Knight has made a big, big name for himself across the European scene as a whole. It's a little bit sad to be seeing this guy go in Baby Knight. Yeah, I mean, it's very difficult. We can look closer at these players here and just kind of talk a little bit more about them. Here is Baby Knight, who recently announced his retirement from StarCraft II. It's a difficult thing to let go. It's a difficult thing for the StarCraft II scene uh, because he is a talent. He's a great player. He's been in WCS from the very beginning in 2012. And here we are in 2014. He got a top six finish last year early in a couple of the seasons. He's one of the most consistent Protoss players we've had always in the Premier League. And then, of course, we have our second player who, for me, I gotta say, is a personal favorite to go very, very far here in this season. It's first. I think he's going far. I'm gonna say it right yeah. now, this guy can be the next Duck Duck. He can enter the Premier League and he can win the Premier League. This guy's capable of anything. He's come here for one specific reason alone, and that is to win. He's living with MC. He wants to be like MC. He wants to go to the finals like MC. All right, well, let's get into it now. Game at number one of the series in the second series of the day for Group E. One of these guys is going to be going up against Stardust in the winner's match. Let's jump right on into it. Merry-go-round is our map as we have spawning up to the top right-hand corner, uh, Red Protoss. And uh, yeah, it's sad to see him leave eventually, but he is Baby Knight. And up to the top left-hand corner, we have our Blue Protoss. Currently also not really representing anyone, representing Global Esports Management, I guess. It is first. Uh, that's right, playing without a team, but with an agency. Yeah. And look for sponsors and so on. Um, but here we have a 12 gate from Baby Knight. I'm not too sure what to expect from him today. Win or lose, um, you know, he's had a fantastic couple of years within the WCS, within the World Championship Series, and it is his last hurrah today. So uh, we'll send him off in a good way for sure. Um, it's been a pleasure having him here, but yeah. he's fighting for one last time. A win would extend his career. He would be looking to play again in the round of 16 for sure. He said he would, well, he promised that he would finish up this season, win or lose. And we'll see. So 12 gateway and single gas from him so far, leaning towards aggression, where on the other side of things, we have first opening up with more of a traditional build, which is the gateway and double gas here. Could be looking at a, uh, an expansion build, could be looking at faster tech, but not looking for fast aggression, that's for sure. Yeah, and with Baby Knight in the position that he is, um, and without actually going for a second gas, with that aggression coming out, I'm not too surprised in terms of you know what he's been saying and not really feeling as much motivation towards the game before so uh, but luckily for first look at this he's gonna spot this out very quickly he's gonna scout this out but uh, despite having a faster cybernet score he has thrown down a second gas anyway could be three gateways could be a bit more stalker heavy instead of zealot heavy yeah if he was to go for multiple gateway aggression could be just 12 gateway for a 12 gateway and looking for a faster cybernet score for from for some form of tech We'll have to find out, really. But he is going to scout his opponent out much faster here. Or not much faster, but at the same speed, sorry. And there is Warp Gate Research down. A lot of Chrono Boost saved up here for Baby Knight. And first, already must be anticipating some form of aggression. Could be three gateway pressure. We'll see what Baby Knight's got planned. Yeah, it has to be. Uh, did he see the Chrono Boost into the, cyber, uh, into the gateway no. and Cyber? And there is the Cyber Core. Okay, so a lot of power coming out of Baby Knight here in the first game. Yep. Uh, not much gas coming in at all. Three across both gas geysers. Yeah, and he's got a probe hidden down the bottom left. Looks like we are going to see a three gateway come out from Baby Knight here. Uh, whereas first, well, he's thrown down the Stargate. 
So uh, when you throw down the Stargate like this, he will be building the Oracle. If Baby Knight has all the units on the other side, the Oracle goes in, kills probes, and he defends with the Mothership Core, and maybe starts Void Ray production. Something along those lines. Yeah. Well, these first two few units are on the way out here for Baby Knight. Oh, the probe, the probe, the probe, the Did probe. Did he get spoiled? Oh, the that's probe. sad. No pile on. He's uh -oh. going to have to send out another probe, and this has been severely delayed yeah. here. Yeah. And, and just to kind of give you an indication as to how Baby Knight's build is shaping up, this is all without Mothership core all of it so straight to the gateway unit straight aggression yeah. this uh, is not a good start for baby knight not at all and that oracle should be built now and that's going to be going into his mineral line and uh the the mothership core of first is almost at 100 which does mean photon overcharge and buys a lot of time we may see a void ray come out to help deal with these units trying to poke up but he already takes a lot of damage oh. on that first stalker oh this is a bit of a disaster here only so far. shields have been taken down by uh by baby knight here yeah Probe rendezvous with the entirety of this army as he moves mm. forwards, but there's so much damage already been done. Yeah, a lot of damage. Zealot down, Stalker down already. Um, but let's have a look here. The Oracle's going to fly across, and we'll see what it does. All right, well, Zealot and Stalker's now moving forwards here for Baby Knight, and looking to try and just power on through. This is, uh, this is, if that pilot went down, it'd be okay, but again, Force and Overcharge holding this back. This is uh, this is going to be hard for Baby Knight to really deal with. Well, there's the Oracle. <laughs> oh, bye bye probes. And a pilot inside there too. Oh, yeah, actually, he did down the stalkers. So that's actually pretty good. Yeah. That's... So he should be able to deflect this. But with Photon Overcharge up here, uh, there's there's a decent amount of stalkers first, and a couple of these units are already damaged. That Oracle could have done so much more. Oh, baited the Zealot into the uh, Photon Overcharge. Yep. Gets himself a stalker, not too bad. Also, second stalker will end up falling, but again, there's more warping in. Good yep. micro back, we'll save one. Oracle even comes back for the defense, because he knows if he can just clean this up, he's going to be at a significant advantage. Yeah, he cleans it up, and he is at a big, big advantage. So now they're both on three gateways. One player has a Mothership Core. One, uh, one player also has potential to use tech, which is the Stargate, and also a pilot inside his opponent's base. He's got everything that Baby Knight hasn't. That's a little bit sad for him to have those zealots now warp in, but actually could throw a final force field and lock those out of the probe line. Uh, oh, but the Oracle comes straight in to actually kill that off. A good pickup. One zealot uh, actually trapped a stalker there for a second and got a lot of damage done. Oracle's going to die. Not too bad of a defense so far from Baby Knight, technically, yeah, but again, but he's got a lot to recover. Stardust has seen the Twilight Council coming in. I mean, not Stardust, sorry. First has seen the Twilight Council coming in, so he knows that Baby Knight's trying to rush up to Blink here to try to defend, but he's going to put a lot of pressure on before that can even happen. And, you know, if not try to win the game with what he has. Yeah, here come the remaining Stalkers of first from the defense to try and seal away the Stalkers of Baby Knight. And not too bad focus fire. We'll get uh, yeah, one or two of those Another down. good warp in here, and he's going to get right towards these Stalkers. Baby Knight is dying off here slowly but surely. Yeah, probe after probe falls. Four Stalkers, the magic number to actually kill those off. And actually, a few more Zealots come in for Baby Knight. So a few doing some work on these Stalkers at the back, but the Stalker numbers for Baby Knight are significantly yeah. waning. First is a killer, man. He's been on top of the Grandmaster ladder for quite yeah. a while since being in Europe. He's a killer, and he kills off Baby Knight in map number one. GG, well played. Good job by first there to actually hold off against that. Yeah. Uh, but again, the scout on a map like Merry-Go-Round to be in there so quickly and see your opponent being very relatively gasless yeah. uh, is a big pickup there for first. I mean, if first is scouted the other way, maybe that Zealot and Stalker would have been out and enough time to stop this pro from scouting what potentially is coming his way. And he did read really well into it. And that's a sign of a really good player. Sees what's up, deals with it, reacts to it, and then, of course, finishes the game off, which he did there. And uh, it is the Korean who is up 1-0. And as expected today, Koreans stand strong, and they're here to kind of say what Korea is all about. Yeah, We've seen Koreans fall so far within the Europe Premier League, but they're fighting back strong today. These two are very, very fierce, very strong competitors. Both of them can go deep in this tournament. Can start us likewise first. And first has just got to kind of get over these initial hurdles in the round of 32. And then once he makes it to the round of 16, if he does make it to that round of 16, that I don't think there's going to be too it's going to be too easy a time stopping this. Yeah, night. like we mentioned earlier, first has the ability to be the next Duck Duck to jump yeah. all the way up to the top and win this entire thing. He's got a lot of potential. He played really well within the WCS last season from Korea, even getting a top four finish at a season finals, which was incredibly difficult to do. Um, he's had mixed results recently. But I really do feel and believe in what he said and his coaches said. He's in great shape, great form, and he's looking to do well this season. Yeah.
All right, we're going to be getting on to map number two in a second here. Frost will be the map of choice. Um, hopefully for Baby Knight, it doesn't go quite as one map went for him in the previous season, uh, where he went for a four gate, I believe, and then was unable to see where his opponent was spawning. I'm sure Baby Knight's going to be playing a little bit more diligently here and spotting his bone, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see aggression again from Baby Knight. Yeah, I mean, Baby Knight, as we've been, uh, as, as if you didn't know with his retirement, he said that he is focusing very heavily on Dota recently, and if you're playing Dota, you're not playing StarCraft, and you're not practicing, and you're not training, which mm -hmm. means you are going to be levels below your opponents who are hungry for this. First is Eager, likewise is Fire Cake, and of course Stardust is. All of these want to be in the round of 16. If you aren't practicing the game, then it's going to be very difficult to tango with the best. Yep. Uh, and that's what we may see today. But uh, as mentioned, win or lose for Baby Knight, it is in one way you know, a celebration of his five Premier League appearances. And of course, a nice send off for him. Yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure having Baby Knight here. All we need to think back to is like his legend killer status in season one of 2013. But let's get into game number two now, as we have spawning up to the top right hand corner, that man himself. It is Baby Knight to the top left hand corner. Currently one game up, it's first. All right, so Frost here, uh, four-player map. Interested to see which way they're going to go. I think First is just going to play a little bit more reactionary. I'm sure he's heard the news about Baby Knight, so he probably knows that if even if with Baby Knight in practice, First would feel comfortable, I think. He's, he's one of the better players in the Premier League this season. So he might play a reactionary style here. We'll have to see what Baby Knight's going to try and accomplish, but, it, you know, Korea is uh, completely all out today. Mm -hmm. No barriers held. They're just breaking through everything and looking for top two positions. Yeah, they are that very, very large mounted machine gun that's looking to bring everyone down today. <laughs> it's a, a very scary lineup indeed. First and Stardust. We've seen the record that Stardust has held. And then likewise, First really, really made a name for himself in WCS Korea last year of all places, which it's one of the most competitive regions. It's you To do well there, you have to be tip top. Yes, you do. You absolutely do. Um, all right, so 13 gateways from both players. Uh, single gas coming in here for Baby Knight is faster than what you'd see if you were about to take two at the same time, which, as you can see by first, it looks like he will be doing two at the same time, just a little bit later on. Mm -hmm. um, Baby Knight is going to take a second gas anyway here. And it looks like he may not... He, with the Chrono Boost as well, he's, he's not going to be aggressive early on here. Um, he may just... Uh, look for different angles to try and win this game on. Well, Pylon goes up to the top left, as is normal usually, to be able to spot things out up there. Also, could end up throwing some tech down if it was something like Stargate. But oftentimes, you see this tech actually being thrown down behind the mineral lines. It's probably what we're going to see from first here uh, with this Pylon up to the top left. It's much harder to scout out in this matchup if it's there. Yeah, very tight building placement so far from first. Really tucked in nicely mm -hmm. on his side of the map there. It's kind of like the new age PvP. You want a lot of room to be able to like do damage to your opponent if they're being aggressive and kite around if they're being extra, extra yeah. aggressive. And then also, you know, it just hides things really nicely. And if you Mothership Core protects everything in its yep. uh, photon overcharge radius. It's good. It's very good. First playing this out comfortably and uh, having a look around as well. I think for first going into a series uh, at the start of a group against a player that just recently retired, that's got to be a confidence booster, I think, for a player like first. Both players with identical builds. Mm. Stargate here, but neither of them have spotted it yet. Yeah. Neither of them know exactly what they're playing against, but they are playing against the same thing. Funny, too, because they both didn't have any... Uh, deflecting units to prevent the scout from seeing it as well, which is funny. Yeah. But the probe never went that far. Baby Knight loses his probe on the other side of the map to the Mothership Core, and First does escape with his. You know, First might be able to anticipate. He did see the pylon up to the top left of his opponent's base. So if, if he, he opens Phoenix... Yeah, and, well, I mean, it really depends here. Mm. If it's Phoenix versus Phoenix, you've got to be really careful and always be watching your units. If it's Oracle versus Phoenix, then the, the Phoenix player's going to walk away with it. And there is the Phoenix... And there is the Oracle. Yeah, there you go. Deary, deary, deary me. First knows what's up, man. Even with just that pylon placement, I yeah. really feel he knows what's up. So the Oracle obviously can't shoot air to air. Phoenix can. Yeah. Two air units, dedication to the same tech. You're about to lose an expensive unit. Yeah. This is not the ideal start here for Baby Knight. The Ooh. Stalker could give him a heads up, but oh, he turns. isn't going to stay there for much longer. 
And that oracle, <coughs> unless it somehow escapes past these phoenixes... Ugh, this, is, this is ugly. A very, very ugly, and a second oracle oh, on the no. way. Very ugly. And Baby Knight, you know, at this point, you're like, oh, oh come on, man. Disaster. Yeah, he had no idea what he was doing. GG. GG. Wow. First very, very fast 2-0 here. And advances on to the winner's match to face off against fellow Korean Stardust. Yeah, so that is really going to be a battle of these two players who are both very strong, very dominant from respective regions. And now they butt heads here in Europe. And uh, one would favor first, who is playing from Dusseldorf, where he lives, while Stardust is currently still visiting in Korea. So the edge goes over to first there, but unfortunately, Baby Knight get swiped to the side by the Korean. All right, so guys, when we come back after the break, we'll find out who moves forwards in first place here in Group E. It's gonna be either Stardust or first.